Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast, I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And you're listening to the Artist Friends Podcast. My name is Clyde J. Kale. It is March the 22nd, a Monday, and this is episode 89, and I'm here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everybody. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Okay, this week... The subject was, and I thought since it's um, the uh, March is considered a Women's History Month, we talk a little bit about the uh, women and uh, women artists and the history of, of uh, women in uh, uh, women's art in history. And so I recommended two videos that are excellent and describes that. If our listeners go to www.talkart.com, podcast.com that's talk art podcast.com women artists you only think of within the the latter uh, 20th century you think of uh what Ola frida and uh, uh george, george Keefe, and, you know but there were a lot of very predominant women artists but then it's like after they pass away they they disappear no one ever hears of them again and the video video talked about some canadian artists uh constance the what was that Uh, it was called the beaver the um hang on the beaver hall hill group the canadian the ladies in canadian canada 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 (laughs) that's what they call themselves why don't you just start tell us a little bit about it you know about them and what you thought of it um, it was very interesting. There's two, this one lady, her name was Prudence. He, how did you pronounce? He word, he word. Anyway, she and her sisters, she, she had a really great painting life. She, I loved her painting style. It was, you know, I don't, was she not trained? I don't remember. I think later on she went to take lessons from the Omega group and workshops, and I forget, I think the Omega group wasn't that in, um, she went to England, and she went to France to paint. Yeah, she went to England during uh, uh, World War One, and uh, was, uh, yeah, uh, over there for a while, and, and uh, studied there, and then she also later on managed to get into, over to Paris, too, you know, to study more, you know, as, as an adult. And uh, 
some of the other women of that group too, you know, also, you know, but they they were all like close friends. Yeah. She had, she's had a sister who died from childbirth. And then about a week later, her father died and she went through a really hard time until she had made the, a friend named Sarah. And then they used to go paint together and hang around all the time with each other. And it seemed to, to help her. You know, the video, it was, they had her, uh, her niece and nephews that were, uh, and she painted them that, that, uh, you know, they're much older and they were, you know, talking about their impressions. And then there's one lady who was her friend who cracked me up. She told a story to describe, uh, this artist, uh, Prudence's, uh, they call it Prue, you know, like Prue mm -hmm. that they were in, uh, uh, over in, uh, in France. And they were staying in the hotel was small. So the beds were rather close. This woman claims that she saw a ghost at the <laughs> bed, this guy like in 17th century garb, you know? And so she reached over and, and Prue, there's a ghost at the foot of my bed. All Prue says, I don't want to see no ghost. And she threw up the covers over her head. And refused. <laughs> That's funny. I thought that was kind of. I don't funny. think I'd want to see him either. <laughs> yeah, but she is. They had. Um, uh, she had a very domineering mother who was, you know, very strict in the in the Victorian era, and so she never. I guess she had opportunities, you know, to uh, to get married, but she never, unlike her friends, and and. Uh, other relatives, uh, she never had a chance to, uh, you know, to have her own life because she felt guilty with her father passing away. She stayed home with her mother, her companion with her mother, and her mother pretty much uh, controlled her and was very uh, domineering. Very, they were upper middle class, and very proper, and her painting was her escape. That's how that's how she escaped, yeah, you know, and everything. Uh, Diane. What what do you think of that video about about those? Yeah, I mean it's it's interesting to me that there's so many unknown women artists like, <laughs> and they're now just finding out bits and pieces about their lives and how you know difficult it was for them. And even though they never really got recognition and stuff, in, in most cases, they still persevered and you know created a life around their art, which was kind of mm -hmm. fascinating. Um, you know, because they, the the way of the times, they weren't really allowed to get out as much, and and things were a lot more restricted. Women didn't so have was, any rights whatsoever. <clears throat> yeah. So the fact that they they still got together and you know created art and stuff was was out for years, even though they didn't ever really um, became famous. <laughs> um, you know, it just spoke to how determined they were that, to um, produce stuff. So I, I really like that part of it. And, uh, you know, as far as the group of people, you know, just women or people in general getting together and painting, it, it's always a good time. <laughs> I mean, it is. If, you have a, if you have a good group of people, it's it's a lot of fun to, to be able to, um, to do that and um, you know, give each other feedback and stuff. Women have a tendency to, to be more more likely to do that than men because uh with men there, there's sometimes there's a the competition maybe the jealousy yeah uh, versus uh, women i'm I'm not saying women don't have that either and to see what i've been my experience is women have a tendency to have more fun to cut up and laugh and, and just really enjoy each other's uh, companionship and uh well i think i think that's true of especially plain air painters that i've come across you know, we, I mean, I've, I've painted in groups before and it's, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> you know, we've become good friends and, and, you know, you just support each other and nobody's really, um, you know, competing with you and everybody helps each other out and stuff. But I, I mean, in competitions, it's different because you have to kind of be, you know, a little more competitive, but, um, generally when you're painting together, like in groups like that, I think most people are pretty you know good about helping each other out and having a good time <laughs> mm -hmm. 
And another thing, there was uh, well, well, lucky that all of them that they wrote, especially Prue, she wrote quite a bit. She kept a personal diary, a lot of her letters, and she uh, wrote in one of her uh, diary entries about uh, her walks with her friend, her best friend Sarah. How they would take walks through the woods, and she said if a stranger was behind them in the <laughs> conversation, they, they would think they were crazy. Because, like, she would ask Sarah, says, um, what color is the snow? And Sarah would give her version, you know, red, orange. And Sarah, what, do, what color do you think the trees are? And, of course, the colors would always be violet and orange and red. And, you know, and this would go. <laughs> then they would say, okay, that's about enough of that. Yeah. <laughs> but a stranger would completely think crazy. Because yeah. <laughs> they were, like, challenging. <laughs> all the time that was their conversation of the you know what colors do you see there you know and 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 then they would uh, you know try to translate it you know into their paintings i thought that i, I just thought, found that to be kind of nice kind of kind of unique you know and mm-hmm. that's what a good friend is for you know the you know the the uh, yeah well it's nice that they had letters and that they, they wrote all those things down because a lot of that kind of stuff gets lost you don't really you know especially nowadays i don't think people write as much as they used to you know, yeah. to letters to each other, like, like yeah. that kind of thing. And I think, um, yeah, it's, I think a lot of that kind of banter back and forth and stuff is lost because people don't put it out. So they see in their pain that, that gives, like we always said, that gives us an insight, you know, an, an insight to your thinking, you know, the creation process. Mm-hmm. And then the second video was, was a short video about the, um, uh, uh, National Women's Museum and Art of Art. I didn't know this museum even existed, and so I was really, really thrilled, you know, to see that. And of course, they have artworks from they have artists in there from throughout the centuries. And of course, we had talked before about that, and I'm not even going to begin to, to spout off some of their names because they're from all over the world, you know, Italian and French. Yeah. And they did bring up that one artist. I can't remember her name, but it always astounds me. That artist that she supported her 11 children with her artwork. That just astounds me. I think her name, wasn't her name Clara Peters? That I'm not sure. She was from 15th. She painted during the 15th and 16th century. I made notes. Then there was Isabetta, Elsabetta, Sarini. From the sixth sixteenth century. Um, okay. <laughs> one of those two are the ones that one of those two are the ones that supported themselves. Yeah, supported she had so many children, and but she painted mainly for a royalty. Yeah. So, if you were back in the and and in the fifteenth century, sixteenth century, if you were lucky to uh impress some duke or some royalty then uh, you were set unfortunately though the general public didn't didn't see their work there's those those works are hidden right away. they just stayed in the just in like, the i don't remember her name but she was very fortunate that uh to uh uh do artwork for a a convent a convent of nuns he lived nearby and the nuns kept hiring her to and to do works to decorate their chapel and everything. And and she painted really these beautiful religious paintings in the chiaroscuro style that you were, you know, where they were done by men, but they were you know done done by woman artists. And she uh, uh, they, they hired her and uh, she did a lot of, like she did that one probably the longest painting. That's what was it? it was like. Um, uh, eight feet tall and like 30 feet long or something like, you know, across the, for the, in, in the nuns, uh, uh, cafeteria <laughs> spanned all across the wall. And it was, you know, religious scenes and everything. So once again, they're, they get lost in history because, you know, they mm-hmm. uh, when they pass away, they're only, they're only now, you know, being discovered. But at least they're represented in this, this museum. It's done a really good job of uh, research. There was one who was from, I think she was from Italy. What? Well, let me type this. I'll type this in and look at it real quick. It was that 
uh, Elizabetta, Elizabetta Sereni. She painted during the 16th century. Was it Italy or Spain? <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, Let's but there, there's so many art, women artists and, and that they've been kind of um, neglected, even in the regular gallery, you know, the mainstream galleries. Women artists are not very well mm -hmm. represented. And there's, there's some art um, galleries now like that two are... Two percent. Yeah. Some of the galleries are now said. noticing that and they're trying to um, fill in some. <laughs> but that one, probably the one you're thinking of, the Italian artist, uh, both. Yeah, Michael, she's an Italian painter. Both Michelangelo and um, I think, and they said, and, and Rembrandt and a couple she, of actually, Yes, this one died at 27. They, they saw mm -hmm. her works and they actually were inspired. They stole some of her creation, some of her technique. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So well artists artists do that, you know, to in order to learn. But the remarkable thing about it is, you know, women artists, you know, are are uh, we only think of the modern times, but back then they were in influencers in the art world in their in their own own respect, in their own in their own way. And uh I find that to be, you know, uh, very remarkable. And as a father of two daughters, I really appreciate that because, uh, you know, they they are mothers, but at the same time, I want them to have a fruitful career if they desire. You know that uh, I uh, this is a uh, you know ins inspiration that uh, just because of your sex doesn't mean you can't be successful. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. Regard. <laughs> And earlier times, it was extremely, these women did it, and they were hard, you know. They were in, in, encountered all kinds of obstacles, you know, and all kinds of uh, uh, roadblocks and uh, barricades and uh, however, whatever analogy you want to use, you know, whatever metaphor, you know. <laughs> there was one artist, too. Her name is uh, Angel, 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 what, Kaufman. I can't spell, <laughs> pronounce things right sometimes. Angelina Kaufman, she was Swiss-born painter in 1763. She founded, she was a founding member of the Royal Academy, and they would not put her name up, but they would put, they had her portrait up. Yes. I you know, in the, to, to get, acknowledge her. I mean, things were, you were chattel back then. You weren't allowed to, yep. to do anything but, you know, have babies and, and uh, take care of them, you know, for women to be able to go rogue and paint and be an artist was <laughs> was a hard road to hope but when you study the history of, of a lot of these women uh their their artwork was their escape that's how they got out of the house that's how they escaped from from their their life you know and uh so i i found that to be uh you know remarkable and uh, inspiring yeah so if we don't have anything else to say Let's wrap this podcast up. You have been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 89 for March the 22nd. And we've been talking with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. And I'm going to say bye-bye to Diane and Constance. Let Diane say bye to everybody. Bye, Clyde. And bye, Constance. Bye, everyone. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. And thanks for listening. And I second that as always. Thank you so much for listening. And um, is there something you want us to talk about? Please send us an email, cjkl at sign mystery dash otr.com. And uh, let us know what you would like to hear, what you'd like, like us to uh, discuss. And even send recommend video links. We appreciate that. Uh, appreciate the feedback. And as always, Give us a star rating and give us a thumbs up and share in the podcast with your friends on social media. I always post a link, so you can, uh, share that link across, across the internet. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt, Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kim. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.
dianehuntstudio.com. Constance brought us in at www.edsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at signmystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or a star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.